What's going on everybody? This is Pokemon Unbound 2 Insane. Today we're going to be taking on Tessie, the seventh gym leader, and boy, we have a surprise for her. We're going to get right to it. Like every other gym in this game, this battle has a specific field effect unique to this battle only. There is permanent heavy rain, which means it cannot be overwritten by sandstorm, hail, or any other weather effects. But more importantly, a Pokemon's typing in this battle is determined by the typing of its first two moves. So we lead Donphan here as Tessie leads Masquerade and gets off the intimidate so check this out as you can see don fan's first move is bulldoze being a ground type and the second move is rapid spin hence don fan in this battle is a normal ground type masquerade starts with sticky web setting up the hazards here a typical lead out of tessie but we're gonna get rid of that right away as don fan attacks with rapid spin actually landing the lucky crit for huge damage but more importantly blowing away the hazard don fan gets a speed boost from the rapid spin and that crit actually does not matter and you'll see why in just a minute either way now that that Don Fan got the speed boost from Rapid Spin, this baits Masquerade into using Haze. This is going to lower Don Fan's speed back down, but it gives us an opportunity to set up the Stealth Rock. Tessie does like to switch a lot, so this is huge. Masquerade's finally going to go for an attack here. It moves first and goes for Scald. It's going to hit Don Fan for super effective damage, but thanks to Sturdy, Don Fan hangs on with one health. Now, worst case scenario is we get burned here, which of course we do, so this kind of foils our plans a bit. We go for Knock Off, which will be boosted by the Dark Gem, but unfortunately, thanks to Don Fan's burn, it's not going to deal enough damage to take him out. Don Fan's going to fall to the burn here, but that's perfectly fine. We did everything we needed to do. We got rid of the sticky web. We set up stealth rocks and got Masquerade in range to come in with a priority attack to finish him off. So now we send out the star of the show, Aegislash. So here's why that crit from the Rapid Spin before didn't matter. Even in the worst case scenario, if Rapid Spin doesn't crit, and Masquerade gets the Scald Burn, Don Fan will always still deal enough damage to get Masquerade in range of a Shadow Sneak. Masquerade doesn't switch out either. He always stays in against Aegislash because he's trying to get up another sticky web, but we don't let him. That's one kill on the board for Aegislash and many more to come. In this battle, you guys are going to see how ridiculously OP Aegislash is. It's actually insane. So here we've got Latias coming out as a Water Electric type as it takes a bit of damage from the Stealth Rocks. This thing is a major threat. So predicting an incoming Surf, we switch Aegislash out for Ludicolo. Ludicolo is the standard grass water type for this battle. Latias is going to go ahead and Mega Evolve, and that's right, folks. This is her ace, Mega Latias. Now, unfortunately, we predict wrong. Latias does not go for Surf, but Thunder instead, having 100% accuracy in the rain. But this isn't all that bad. As long as we don't get paralyzed, Ludicolo is not going to type resist, but we hang on with enough health to now retaliate. We attack first with Fake Out to get off a bit of chip damage, because why not? And this little amount of damage can actually matter. If Latias goes for Surf rather than Thunder on that first turn, Ludicolo will have enough health left to almost exactly two shot with Giga Drain. That's why getting off that chip damage first with Fake Out is so important. Now, another way to consistently deal with this is to equip Ludicolo with a big root or a grass gem or something that makes Giga Drain deal and restore more health. So this way, if Latias does go for Thunder, Ludicolo will be able to restore enough health to take a second Thunder and then finish it off with another Giga Drain. Now, of course, this works only if Ludicolo does not get paralyzed by the first Thunder. Ludicolo needs to outspeed, and even with Swift Swim, this doesn't work if he is paralyzed. So enough of my tangents, here we go. We've got Aegislash on the field, and we're predicting that Latias will move first, but he goes for Calm Mind. Aegislash being in the defense stance at the start of the turn makes Latias recognize that he cannot deal enough damage to Aegislash having such high defenses. That's why he goes for Calm Mind there. Now it's our turn to attack. Aegislash changes into his blade form and attacks with Night Slash, landing the lucky crit, but it's still not enough to take Latias out. Definitely a testament to Megalodius' insane defense stat. But that's not going to matter anymore. He's low enough that we can take him out with the priority move Shadow Sneak. And that's Tessie's ace Megalodius down for the count. Aegislash putting in that work. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. Remember to click the like button. It's good for the YouTube algorithm. And consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this. So that's two down, four to go. As leader Tessie sends out High Dragon. High Dragon coming out as a Dark Steel type. So here we predict an incoming Dark Dark Pulse, and for that, we're gonna switch to Breloom, who is a pure fighting type for this battle. We predict right this time as Hydragon goes for Dark Pulse, Breloom's gonna type resist, as well as having max special defense EVs specifically for this. Despite all that, Dark Pulse still did a good bit of damage. Breloom is just a fragile Pokemon in general. So we click Spore here, predicting the switch out. Hydragon always switches into Zera or 
Aura. Zero Aura coming out as an electric flying type, which is why the Stealth Rocks did so much damage and the Spore Connect. Now, Sleep is heavily nerfed in this game, specifically for the player only. So Zero Aura will likely only sleep for one to two turns max, but we're still gonna use that as an opportunity to get a clean switch in to, you guessed it, the star of the show, once again, Aegislash. So now we wanna predict if Zero Aura stays asleep or wakes up this turn. It's kind of a 50-50. So we go for the greedy play here, clicking Night Slash. We predict and hope that he stays asleep, but of course he wakes up and attacked with Plasma Fist. Unfortunately, we did not use King Shield, which would have been the better play here, but luckily we still are at least in the defense stand. This is the benefit of Aegislash having a low speed stat, as he is able to take the hit while in the defense stance and then switch to his blade stance and retaliate, having greater defense in the shield stance and having greater attack while in the blade stance. This is the general idea of how you want to play Aegislash, and to be honest, this is my first time ever playing Aegislash. This is the first Aegislash I've ever caught, and tell you what it's a lot of fun so tessie switches out zera aura into high dragon as we predict wrong going for king's shield but that's fine even if we did attack we wouldn't have been able to deal much damage to high dragon anyway so like a game of cat and mouse as high dragon comes back out so does breloom a dragon fires off the dark pulse that was meant for Aegislash, but breloom's gonna take it instead and takes it like a boss hanging on just barely with 26 health left so now we have to click mock punch here because high dragon is faster so we can't risk predicting a switch out and going for a spore like we did last time but high dragon does in fact stay in we attack first with the priority move mock punch boosted by the fighting gem we get the totally unnecessary lucky crit high dragon being four times weak to fighting and that's lights out for high dragon again high dragon was a dark steel type that's why mock punch was four times super effective so sea king comes out next as a water steel type so now that breloom's done his job taking care of the high dragon we can get off some last minute damage here with mock punch it's super effective we hit him for huge damage and sea king fires back with smart strike breloom's gonna go down but it's fine he did his job taking care of the high dragon and got some extra credit on the sea king as well now that sea king's got low health we can bring back out aegislash and finish it off with the priority move shadow sneak whenever you send aegislash out it defaults to coming out in the shield stance so it's good for switching into tank attack and then whenever you click an attack of your own that's when it switches into the blade stance so we go for shadow sneak it's only a 40 base power move but aegislash having such an insane attack stat and being boosted by the stab bonus as well it's enough to finish off the sea king aegislash our mvp this battle for sure just running through tessie's team here but she's still got two pokemon left as she sends out tornadus now tornadus is a flying dark type which means he's got some type of dark move which means we have to be careful with aegislash here now aegislash is really vulnerable in the blade stance so we want to go for king's shield protecting us this turn and switching back into the shield stance as well now if the opponent attacks king shield with a contact move it sharply reduces the opponent's attack which is part of why king shield is such a good move but tornadus is a special attacker and it goes for dark pulse so it's not going to get the attack drop but it doesn't really matter we just wanted to protect that turn to switch back into the defense stance and get some leftover heals as well and now that aegislash is back in the defense stance the ai recognizes that it cannot deal enough damage to aegislash even with dark pulse being super effective it's why tornadus goes for nasty plot giving us an opportunity to go on the attack we switch back into the blade stance and fire off an iron head dealing huge damage but not quite enough to take him out we take rocky helmet damage but it's totally fine it's not gonna matter here you guys can see the true power of aegislash now you might say you just got lucky it went for nasty plot and didn't attack with dark pulse but the reason why it went for nasty plot is because it recognizes that dark pulse would not do enough damage to aegislash while he is in the shield stance we we finish it off with shadow sneak before it even gets a chance to reap the benefits of that nasty plot and get an attack off Iggy slash carrying us to victory as tessie sends out her last remaining pokemon zera aura zera aura comes back out with little remaining health and takes even more damage from the stealth rock well this ain't good but it ain't over till it's over i'm afraid it is over my friend zera aura is low enough that we can just click shadow sneak here zera aura doesn't have any priority moves of its own so we move first with shadow sneak dealing enough damage to take it out and the lucky crit for good measure and there you have it folks pokemon unbound insane the seventh gym leader tessie gg so yeah this pokemon is actually insane and i don't know if i'm gonna continue to use it it almost feels like cheating but at the same time maybe egg slash just happens to be really good for this battle but he is really fun to play so i don't know if i'm gonna use him yet we shall see in the future but leave a comment let me know what you guys thought about this one how you feel about egg slash remember to click the like button it's good for the algorithm and if you like videos like this consider subscribing to the channel to see more and as always thanks for watching and see you next time
Thank you.